So, uh, Professor Clark, thank you very much indeed for coming on today. And I realise that you've been involved in brain research for many decades now. And obviously, as a neuroscientist, you study the brain rather like a machine. What if, can you explain to me, what is the difference between the brain and a machine? Is, it, is there any difference? Well, the first question, I suppose, is, is the brain, brain a machine? And the brain is made of neurons and other cells, and they interact with each other. And as far as we know, these cells, they're, they're different components, obey the laws of physics and chemistry. The interactions between them obey the laws of physics and chemistry. So you could call it a neuronal machine. And the question, is it just a machine? Depends what you put in the word but. I mean, you could have a picture that's uh, painted with, uh, with oil paint, and you could, you could say, is it just molecules on canvas? And in a sense, yes, but if you say it's just that, you're missing the point. The, the, the beauty of the picture, the picture may represent something that has a meaning. And so if you say it's just molecules on canvas, then, then you're missing the point. And I think the same is true of the brain. So how do you understand then the whole idea of the soul? I mean, is this soul somehow kind of living like a ghost in the machine somewhere? Is that what being a soul means? Well, there again, you bring up a, a very historical, important question. Uh, and there are really two main views uh, among Christians. One is, you could call it a Neoplatonist view, in which you consider that there's an eternal soul that's separate from the, the brain and actually interacts with the brain. And that was the view of Descartes, and that was the view of uh, many of the, the leading Christian thinkers. But if you go back to the biblical texts, that was not really the idea. When the, the passages in the Old Testament where it's described that man became a living soul, but other translations say a living being, and the word that's translated soul, nefesh, really has the idea of just a, a living creature, not a soul. So the, the, the Platonic notion of a soul is not really taught in, in the Bible. And uh, what the Bible probably means is more that, that man is a living being, and what we call the soul is, to my mind, so to speak, incarnate in the brain, another separate thing that interacts with the brain. Mm -hmm. I know that you're a believer in God. I mean, do you see anything that you as a believer should, or Christian, should worry about when they investigate the brain? Do you ever think you'll uncover something that would undermine your belief in some way? I think it's very unlikely, uh, because I, I believe that God is the maker of everything, including the brain. And so if we study uh, the brain, we're likely to find indirect indicators of God. But of course, that's my assumption. There can always be surprises. But I, I fail to see how uh, our findings in the brain would, would contradict my, my Christian faith. So, so what do you understand by, well, you said that God is a maker. I mean, do you mean that the brain suddenly appeared, you know, on a given day the brain suddenly appeared? Is that what a maker means? What, what does being a maker mean? God is the maker of everything, including the brain. And I, I don't think he suddenly created different species at particular moments. I, I, I do believe that, the, that evolution happened. I do believe that the Big Bang happened. I do believe that the Earth, that the universe is very old and there was gradual evolution. Mm -hmm. I'm not totally certain if it's entirely by uh, Darwinian selection or there might be other mechanisms we don't understand. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't really disagree very much compared with uh, other scientists, whether believing or not believing. So what you mean then is that the brain has arisen out of a long evolutionary process? Exactly, yes. yes. Well, thank you very much, uh, Professor Clark. Thanks for being with us here at the Faraday course. Thank you.